Hi, this is George Woodbury from the College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And in this video, I'm going to go over how to set up binomial probabilities for introductory statistics students. When you're setting up a binomial problem, if you list these six pieces of information, you'll almost always get this without trouble. We want to list the number of trials, n, the event that's considered to be a success for any one trial, the number of successes, x, that we're interested in, the probability of success, p, for any one trial, the event considered to be a failure, and the probability of failure on any one trial, 1 minus p. Let's take a look at the first problem. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, 62% of Alaskan households have a computer. If 15 Alaskan households are selected at random, find the probability that 9 of them have a computer. Okay, n is the 15 in this problem. Remember for binomials, we're always looking for this many out of that many, and n is the number that it's out of. Here we're looking for the probability that 9 have a computer. So our value of x is exactly 9. Do we know the probability that a household has a computer? That is given here at 62%, and that's our value of p. Let's go ahead and take a look at all this information filled out. n was 15. The success is that a household has a computer because we were looking for the probability that nine households had a computer. Um, the probability of success is 0.62. Again, we were given that the percentage of households that had computers was 62%. The failure is the complement of the success, so household does not have a computer, and 1 minus 0.62 is 0.38. Okay, if you're doing this one by hand, uh, since there's only one value of x, you plug it directly into the binomial formula. Real quickly, that formula, the probability of x successes, n c x combinations, times p to the x power, times 1 minus p, to the n minus x power. For my students using StackCrunch, we type three uh, values into the box. n is 15, p is 0.62, and then we type that x is equal to 9. Okay, if you're trying this at home, the correct answer is 0 0.2040. Let's take a look at another one. A fair coin is flipped 14 times. Find the probability that it lands on heads at least seven times. That's at least seven out of 14. So X is at least seven, N is 14. Uh, the success is that it lands on heads. And the probability of heads, recall, is one out of two or 0.5. Okay. Let's take a look at the information. Out of 14, we want at least seven heads, and the probability of getting one head on one turn is 0.5. Uh, using StackCrunch, n equals 14, p equals 0.5, x greater than or equal to 7. Um, if you're doing this by hand, you have to add up from 7 through 14. You could also use the complement rule with 0 up to 6. Either add up the ones you want, or add up the ones you don't want and subtract from one. Again, if you're trying these at home, the correct answer here, 0 0.6047. Let's try another one. Uh, a recent study showed that 89% of teachers feel that they are somewhat prepared to integrate technology into instruction. If nine teachers are selected at random, find the probability that at least two feel they are not prepared to integrate technology. Okay. N is 9. And X here, at least 2, greater than or equal to 2. But the 89% is not P. Because we're counting the number that feel they're not, that are not prepared to integrate technology, but the 89% say that they are somewhat prepared. So 1 minus 0.89 or 0.11 is the value we use for P. Whenever 
the percentage doesn't match the success and the problem, you're going to have to go and look for the value of P. So again, N was 9. Oops, sorry about that. That should be a 2. The success is that they're not prepared to integrate technology. The failure then is that they are prepared. We were given the probability of failure, 0.89. Our value of P is 0.11. By stack crunch, N equals 9. P equals 0.11. X greater than or equal to 2. If you're working this by hand, the complement of at least 2 is 0 or 1. You could plug in 0, plug in 1, add those results, and subtract from 1. Use the complement rule. Uh, the answer here should be 0.2599. According to the Associated Press, in 1998, 20% of the people in Mississippi did not have health insurance. If eight people from Mississippi were selected random, find the probability that one, two, or three of them did not have health insurance. Uh, N is eight. Out of eight people, we're looking for one, two, or three, those are our values for X, that do not have health insurance. Well, the 20% is the percentage that did not have health insurance, so that's our value of P. N is eight, X is one, two, or three, and P is 0.2. If you're doing this one by hand, since we have an interval of values, we plug in all three of these and add up their probabilities. Uh, this works out to be 0.7759. Moving on. A couple plans to have six children. Assuming that the probability that a child is a girl is 0.5, find the probability that the couple has at least three girls. Okay. So we're looking for the probability of at least three girls, x greater than or equal to three, out of six children. That's our value for n. And we know that the probability that a child is a girl is given as 0.5. That's our value for p. Here we have a couple of choices by hand. We could start at three and add our way up through six. Or we could use the complement, which is from 0 through 2. If you're doing this via stack crunch, again, n is 6, p is 0.5, and we want x to be at least, which means greater than or equal to 3. The answer here, 0.6563. Data from the U.S. Department of Commerce shows 19.5% of Americans age 18 and over hold a bachelor's or higher degree. If seven Americans over 18 are selected at random, find the probability at least one does not have a bachelor's or higher degree. Okay. At least one does not have a degree. At least one is X is greater than or equal to one. At least one out of seven, that's our value for N. And we were looking for, um, we're told to, to find the probability that at least one does not have a bachelor's degree, but here the 19.5% is the percentage that do. So 80.5% do not. Sorry, that's a mess. Let's make that a little more legible. 19.5%. So P is going to be the 80.5% because that's the probability that someone does not have that degree. Uh, students in my class, we know that as the switcheroo. All right, so N was 7, X was at least 1, and P was 0 0.805. If you're doing this one by hand, you could add up from 1 through 7. It would be better to use the complement rule with 0. If you're using stack crunch, put in 0.7 for N. 0.805 for P and greater than or equal to 1 for X. And the correct solution, correct answer here, actually works out to be 
to start. If we round that to four places, that equals one. A couple more to go. The probability of st college student works to earn extra money is 0.65. If 10 students are selected at random, find the probability that at least seven work to earn extra money. At least seven is x greater than or equal to seven out of the 10. That's our value for n. And we're looking for at least seven who work. And the probability that a student works is given 0.65. That's our value for P. Stat crunch, 10 for N, 0.65 for P. X is greater than or equal to seven. If you're working by hand, it's gonna be easier to add up seven through 10 than to work with the complement, which is zero through six. That's fewer times into the formula. That's a better way to go. The probability here, the answer is 0.5138. Okay, I have one more binomial problem for us. An instructor gives an eight question multiple choice quiz. There are five possible answers for each question. Only one is correct. A student must answer at least six questions correctly to pass the quiz. If the stu if a student randomly guesses on all eight questions, find the probability that he passes the quiz. Okay, so we know that a student needs to get at least six, oops, x greater than or equal to six, out of eight to pass. The one thing that we, that we don't know is the value of p, but if a student is guessing, the probability of guessing correctly is one out of five because there are five possible answers, but only one is correct. And one fifth is the same as the decimal point two. Let's take a look at the setup. N is eight, P is point two, X is at least six. So by hand, we could go from six through eight. The complement's no good here. That would be zero to five, that's too many times. Stack crunch, we enter the three key pieces of information. N is eight, P is 0.2, and then X greater than or equal to six. The correct answer here is 0 0.0012. So I guess that just goes to show that it's tough to pass quizzes when you're guessing. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have a request for a different video that I can put up for you on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, and the address is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks and good luck.